Hi. Um, today I just wanted to um, go over my letter, my disassociation packet that I had mentioned in a previous video. And um, so I thought I would just share it with you and read it to you guys. And of course these are the many pages, copies of um, pages that I made from the kit and from the finished mystery that I sent along with that. But that's too much. But I just wanted to um, share my letter with you that I wrote. And of course, um, I addressed it to the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, which apparently is a big no-no. But anyway, so it says, I am writing this letter to share my journey with you. As we are encouraged to examine our faith, I began to do just that, and this is what I discovered. I learned that founder Charles Taze Russell taught that 1874 was the beginning of Christ's invisible rule in the heavens and that God's final war would be in 1914. He believed in pyramidology and thought that the Great Pyramid of Giza was the Bible in stone. Calculations from measuring the monument's passageways provided him with the 1874 and 1914 dates for Jesus' return. A few years uh, after his death, the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society erected a tombstone in a Pittsburgh cemetery in 1921 in the shape of a pyramid to honor Pastor Russell's work, and it remains there to this day. Pastor Russell wrote a six-volume set of books called Study in the Scriptures, um, and this was proclaimed as being the six keys to unlocking the spiritual knowledge of God. I have copies of these books along with the finished mystery book, which is Russell's writings, that were put together after he died in the seventh book and was published by Judge Joseph Rutherford without consent from the writing committee, committee or anyone else because he strongly believed truths therein, which is told in the video by the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society called uh, Out of the Darkness. The publication of this book Despite the opposition uh, Rutherford endured, despite the opposition Rutherford endured, was seen as a testament of Jehovah's hand in the matter. The video, however, did not state any of the truths that this book contained, such as the identity of Michael the Archangel as being the Pope of Rome, Christendom foretold to be destroyed in 1918 through 1920. And the angel in Revelation 8.3 was in fact the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. And that Pastor Russell, after his death, was still managing the harvest work. There are too many to list, so I have enclosed a copy of the highlighted truths from my own book <laughs> for you to read and discern for yourself. For obvious reasons, many of the publications are not readily available, nor are they included in the Kingdom Library CD. Hmm. <sighs> but thanks to Grandma's library, I have many publications in bound volumes from 1952 onward, uh, if anyone would like to see them. Judge Rutherford wrote many books that contain false prophecies predicting events for the years 1914, 1918, 1925, and 1941, and I'm sure I missed a few, but that's okay. He instituted and abolished many teachings that remain in effect to this day. He, having been at one time a door-to-door -door encyclopedia salesman, made it a Christian responsibility to go door-to-door -door selling his literature. Did Jesus or his apostles really go door-to-door? -door? If you read Matthew 4:23, chapter 9 and 35, and Matthew 10, verse 11, it says that his disciples went to the homes of people, not to give a witness and move on to the next door, but to stay with that person for the duration of their stay in that town or village. I'm not saying that it's wrong for someone to go house to house preaching if they so desire, just that it is not a biblical requirement. Expressions of your faith can vary and do not require a briefcase or a literature bag. Rutherford prophesied by means of his direct communication with God's angels that 
Abraham, Isaac, and other saints would be resurrected in 1925. He held fast to this prophecy even when 1925 came and went without fulfillment. And in 1929, he even built a mansion in California called Beth Serene. Serene. So that when Abraham and the others were resurrected, they would have a nice place to dwell with reliable transportation as he purchased two brand new Cadillacs for them to drive around in. <laughs> this was <laughs> to be the beginning of the thousand year reign. Uh, however, uh, while waiting for the resurrection to occur, he would occupy the property and maintain use of the vehicles. 1929 was the year starting the Great Depression, and most people were having a hard time providing the basics such as food and shelter for themselves. So that's nice. Uh, the saints would be resurrected and living in California by 1925. False. Rutherford's... Uh, changed Russell's date of 1874 as Jesus' return to uh, 1914 and said that generation of people who were alive in 1914 would by no means pass away until the conclusion of the system of things. No longer taught. False. Pastor Russell was the faithful and discreet slave. False. Armageddon was to occur in 1975. False. Explained as overzealous, presumptuous brothers and sisters who got carried away. This would then have to include my parents and grandparents who prepare, prepared for the end in 1975. One is taught early on that light keeps getting brighter, but one has to ask themselves if this light is adding to the understanding or clarity of a teaching or being used to cancel out former teachings that were false. Were the apostles ever given new light that caused them to abandon a teaching and implement a whole new teaching in its place? Deuteronomy 18.22 When a prophet speaks in the name of Jehovah and the word does not occur or come true, that is the word Jehovah did not speak. Paradise Restored to Mankind by Theocracy book. In 1972, page 353-354, Jehovah, the God of true prophets, will put all false prophets to shame, either by not fulfilling the false predictions of such self-assuming prophets, or by having his own prophecies fulfilled in a way opposite to that predicted by the false prophets. False prophets will try to hide their reasons for feeling shame by denying who they really are. I was surprised to learn that in the Kingdom Interlinear Translation of the Greek Scriptures, book Kit for short, it states, among other interesting things, that the name Jehovah has, has been added 237 times to the text of the New Testament. In fact, that name Jehovah is not found in the entire New Testament, not one time. Also, many scriptures have had words added, taken out, or changed, which is evident in the kit. This book shows you the Greek words and the English translation just under them. Then you compare the English words with the New World Translation Bible verses. The Society has stopped print on this publication, and it is also no longer available but I have one. <laughs> Revelation 22, 18 warned that no one is to add or take away from the scriptures. Another startling discovery was that of the teaching I was totally unaware of. It's true. It is taught that Jesus is the mediator only for the 144,000. What? <laughs> yes. It is taught that Jesus died and poured out his blood only for the 144,000. 1 Timothy uh, 2, 5, and 6 says, There is one mediator between God and man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself a corresponding ransom for all. 
Given these new facts, I knew that the only thing to do was to go to God's Word, the Bible for answers. I began to read all of God's Word in context and read that Jesus had been given all authority, not just some, but all. In the New Testament, I read about the name of Jesus being taught and that Jesus having come as the Messiah was in fact the good news being preached by the apostles. Matthew chapter 10, verse 32 and 33 says, To declare yourself for Jesus, New Jerusalem Bible. Colossians 2, 6 says, You must live your whole life according to the Christ you have received, Jesus the Lord. You must be rooted in him and held firm by the faith you have been taught and full of thanksgiving. Make sure that no one traps you and deprives you of your freedom by some second-hand, empty, rational philosophy based on the principles of this world instead of on Christ. Yes, Christ has purchased us and we belong to him. Our faith and obedience to him pleases the Father. Colossians 2.16 says, from now onward, never let anyone else decide what you should eat or drink or whether you are to or observe uh, annual festivals, new moons, or Sabbath. These were only a reflection of what was coming. The reality is Christ. Also, 2 Peter 1.3 says, By his divine power he has given us all things we need for life. He's given us all things and true devotion, bringing us to know God himself. He has called us by his own glory and goodness, uh, the New Jerusalem Bible. So, in conclusion, it is the recent uncoverings of many disturbing facts, along with many wonderful revelations in God's word, that has led me to the decision that I can no longer be associated with the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. I resign, although I myself see no need to formally resign as God already knows my heart and has walked with me every step and has proven to be a lamp to my foot and a light to my roadway. That's Psalms 119, 105. As for the brothers and sisters, I will love you always. Thank you. And that was the end of my letter. That was it, and I just wanted to share that with you, and uh, I stand by it. <laughs> Thank you, and have a good day.